Good day, learners! Welcome to the world of media and information. My name is Sir Brax. Let's think wisely, create smartly, and share information responsibly. This is Senior High School's Media and Information Literacy. In the last episode, you did an impressive job learning the basic components of media and information literacy and its relevance to you and to your community. Before we dive into our next lesson, let's do a quick review. Do you still recall our previous lesson? Let's try to answer these questions. Select the best answer for each item from the box. The choices are media, communication, information, channel, message, receiver. Question number one. What do you call the communication outlets or tools used to store and deliver information? What is your answer? The correct answer is media. Question number two. What do you call the content being relayed in the communication process? Great! The correct answer is message. In the next three questions, you will determine whether the given situations show media as a tool for transferring of ideas, for education, for entertainment, for interacting with society, and for staying up to date. Are you ready? Number 3. Maria turned the television on to watch the new episode of their lesson on DepEd TV. Brilliant! The correct answer is for education. Number 4. To complete their project, Danny discussed the final details with his partner Henry over the phone. Good job! The correct answer is for transferring of ideas. Number 5. Sally is organizing their class reunion. She utilized her Google and Zoom apps to plan it with her former classmates. Fantastic! The correct answer is for interacting with society. You did a great job! Now, you're ready for the next lesson. So get ready to think, create, and share. We are here at the University of Southern Mindanao's Library, a state-of-the-art information hub in South Central Mindanao. By now, you are already aware that media and information are essential in our daily lives. These are almost everywhere. In this episode, you will understand what the similarities and differences between media literacy technology literacy, and information literacy are. And you will also get to know what characteristics media, technology, and information literate individuals possess. To get you warmed up, let us have an activity. Have you heard the phrase, too much is bad? In practicing a healthy lifestyle, we are being advised to consume only the right amount of anything for an optimum function. This applies to our consumption of food, water, vitamins, and exercise. And do you know that media is on the list? Hmm, my question is, do we consume the right amount of media? Let's find out by creating a media use log. Step 1. You will need your writing materials. Step 2. Draw a table with 2 columns and 5 to 10 rows. Label the first column as media and the second column as number of hours in a week. You are given 5 seconds to do the same. Step 3. Write all the media you use in the first column and the hours you spend using it in the second column. Step 4. After writing down all the media you use in the hours you spend on each one of them, add up all the average hours you spend using media 
and write the sum in the last row in the second column. 43 hours. How's your media log? Before we check your answers, let me show you the result of my media use log. I am using my cell phone, television, the radio, the internet, and books daily. And on a weekly average, I am spending 8 hours using my phone, 7 hours watching movies on TV, 5 hours listening to the news on the radio, 20 hours browsing the internet for work, and 3 hours in reading books. That is a total average of 43 hours. How about you? How much time do you spend using media? To share your answers, you can take a snapshot of your media use log using a camera or a cell phone. Upload your file on our official Facebook page at DepedTV MIL with the hashtag MediaUseLogMILEP2. Finally, you're done creating your media use log. Do you now realize how much time you spend consuming media? During the COVID-19 pandemic, online activities have greatly increased, mainly because going out is too risky. That is why social media has been our companion to shop, to market business, to entertain, and to keep us informed. And now, it is widely used for education. Well, no one could be blamed for our social media dependence. However, the frequency of our media consumption and exposure makes us prone to common yet serious problems on media and information, such as cyber addiction, misinformation, disinformation, identity theft, cyberbullying, and other mistreats. That is the main reason why we need to learn the three essential competencies in MIL, media literacy, information literacy, and technology literacy. Especially today that our generation is widely influenced by media, it is important to be discerning whether the information we encounter is true or not. Take a look at these headlines. Breaking news. Alcoholic drinks reduce coronavirus risk. Dragon's egg found in Cotabato. Vaccine that can transmute animals to human beings discovered by a scientist. UN forced to admit Gates-funded vaccine is causing polio outbreak in Africa. Skeleton of Goliath found in Jerusalem. Do you believe these news items? Do you think they are true? You're right. Those are all fake news. Remember that not all information online is true because anybody with access to the World Wide Web and people with the ability to post and share information can put up anything online, which can lead to misinformation and disinformation. With this, we have established that dealing with media, information, and technology requires a certain degree of competence. For instance, as a student, you get instructions from your teacher to write a creative report. What do you think are the things you need to accomplish for your tasks? Yes, that's correct! You will need information about the assigned topic. But how can you ensure that you get the most reliable information? And how will you communicate your report effectively? Awesome! You're right! First, you need a gadget that has access to the internet or a book that has sufficient information about the subject. Next, you need to organize and communicate your information in the most appropriate and effective communication tool. Media, Technology, and Information We are living in the 21st century, and as a student, I know these things make you go crazy because in dealing with them, you are bombarded with questions like What information do I need? Where will I find trustworthy information? How do I obtain it? And what technology should I use? Since media, information, and technology have become equally essential in our daily lives, we should also become more responsible in using them by understanding what it means to be literate in these areas, right? First, what is literacy? It is commonly defined as the ability to read and write, but there's another more complete definition released by UNESCO. 
which defines literacy as the ability to identify, understand, interpret, create, communicate, and compute using printed and written materials associated with varying contexts. An example is, Paul uses digital tools and devices to complete his assignments. He navigates the internet to locate reliable websites for information. He synthesizes the information he finds, identifying text-based evidence that he'll go on to cite. He uses a multimedia presentation to communicate his work. He shares his work with an audience. Paul and his classmates give feedback on one another's work. Paul's life is all about taking in information, reflecting on it, sharing it, connecting with others, and communicating about what he's seen, read, thought about, experienced, and felt. What Paul experienced were the daily literacy-related practices of a typical adolescent like you. The next thing you need to be familiar with will be mentioned frequently in this episode. It is the term Reliable source Reliable means something you can trust, and source means a place, person, or thing where we can obtain something. There are several main criteria for determining whether a source is reliable or not. These are Accuracy Authority and Coverage Accuracy refers to the verification of the information you already know against the information found in the source. Authority refers to the trustworthiness of the source, which could be an author or institution. Coverage refers to the examination of the content of the source and how it fits your information needs based on its relevance to your topic. Next up, what is media literacy? It is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, and create media in a variety of forms. It aims to empower you by providing the knowledge and skills necessary to engage with both traditional and new technologies. As a media literate person, you must be able to access, analyze or evaluate, and create media. Access means the ability to recognize the media needed and its availability for your use. For example, in Paul's class, they were instructed by their teacher to look for an example of a book review for their movie assignment. What medium will he use? Should he go look for it in books, on the internet, or in newspapers? By analyzing and evaluating means the ability to think critically about the accuracy, credibility, or evidence of bias in the content presented in various media. This happened when our character Paul comes across bizarre information or shocking news on his Facebook. First, he checks the source of the information and sees if it's from a reliable source, then verifies its content through further research and readings. To create means the ability to use media tools to produce media content. This can be applied to Paul's ability to create a video using the proper visual principles. Next term, Information Literacy. It is the ability to recognize when information is needed and to locate, evaluate, and effectively communicate information in its various formats. An information literate person can recognize, locate, evaluate, and communicate information. Recognize means the ability to identify information when needed and use it efficiently. This is evident when you know exactly what specific information you are looking for. Like Paul, he has a task to search for a movie review, and that is where his research revolves. He first looked for an example of a movie review and used it well in making his school project. Locate. You must have the ability to find reliable sources of information or locate them when needed. Evaluate means you must have the ability to assess whether the information is true or fake. In locating reliable sources, you must also evaluate the information and its reliability. 
This happens when Paul can locate the information he needs on a reliable website. Communicate. You must have the ability to share information effectively. From the information you gathered, you must have the competence to share or communicate information. This is comparable to Paul's skills in organizing information and sharing it with an audience. Lastly, technology literacy or digital literacy. It is the ability of an individual, either working independently or with others, to use technological tools responsibly, appropriately, and effectively. A technology literate person is skillful, knowledgeable, and can engage in online activities. Skillful. You must be skillful in the use of digital tools. Knowledgeable. You must know basic principles in computing devices. The skill and knowledge about something is a pair we cannot separate. For example, in order for Paul to accomplish his tasks, he needs to know how to edit videos through his laptop. Paul became skilled in editing by observing his older brother using his digital tools. Engage. You must have the ability to responsibly engage in online activities. With his skill in using the laptop and other technological tools, Paul was also able to engage in online activities and he makes sure to always be a responsible digital citizen. Those are the definitions of media literacy, information literacy, and technology literacy, and the characteristics that a media, information, and technology literate person possess. Now, from 1 to 10, where 1 is the lowest score and 10 as the highest, how will you rate yourself as a media literate person? How about as an information literate person? And lastly, as a technology literate person. Did you score high? Great job! Now that you know what media, information, and technology literacy are, it's time to dig deeper and discover the similarities and differences between media literacy, information literacy, and technology literacy. First, let's zoom into the similarities and differences between media literacy and technology literacy. Media and technology literacy are quite similar. Both require visual literacy, knowledge building, and cultural competence. But media literacy generally focuses more on consumers being engaged with media. It uses forms of communication and produces ways of communicating. While technology literacy is about participation in digital media in an ethical way, it applies newfound knowledge from digital environments and collaboration therein. Let's zoom next to the second part of the diagram, the comparison between information literacy and technology literacy. Information literacy and technology literacy meet halfway in the ability to find and use information, but they differ because information literacy focuses on analyzing, utilizing, organizing, managing, and gathering available information while technology literacy is more about one's ability in using technological tools in a digital environment to communicate information. Here now comes the last part of the diagram, the comparison between media literacy and information literacy. Media and information literacy meet in information management. Both have to do with our information engagements through different types of media and other information providers and how we interpret and make informed decisions as users of media and information. They are different because media focuses on the media content and the effects of the media industry on society, while information is more on library science or the competence to be effective and ethical during the circulation of information. Why is it important that you become a media, information, and a technology literate individual? You're right! With these literacies, you become more responsible and more careful. 
in consuming and producing media contents, in collecting and sharing information, and in utilizing digital tools while participating in a digital environment. Now that you have learned all the concepts you need to know in this episode, let's have our final activity. I will be giving you a situation. You have to answer my questions in 3 seconds. In this activity, you will determine whether the situation in each item demonstrates media literacy, information literacy, or technology literacy. Ready? Let's do it! Number 1. Billy knew that the news he saw on Twitter is fake. What is your answer? Awesome! The correct answer is information literacy. Number 2. Gail is aware of how media influences individuals. That is why she doesn't let her 3-year-old brother watch violent-themed movies and television shows. What is your answer? Good job! The correct answer is media literacy. Number 3. John creates video content for his weekly vlog by demonstrating his exceptional ability to use his camera to shoot and his laptop to edit. What is your answer? The correct answer is technology literacy and media literacy. Number 4. Dave knew that it is not right to copy the work of an author without consent, so he sent an email to ask for permission. What is your answer? Great! The correct answer is information literacy. Number 5. Tristan looked for an elaborate discussion about the COVID-19 crisis, so he checked some posts from the World Health Organization and Department of Health websites. The correct answer is information literacy and media literacy. How many correct answers did you get? I'm sure you did great. If you have a cell phone, please take a photo of your paper and upload it in our official Facebook page at Deped TV MIL and use the hashtag MILEP2. I'm sure that the activity helped you to clearly understand media information and technology literacy. Wrapping up, media and information literacy indeed aim to enable individuals to think critically about the media and information we consume by engaging in a process of inquiry. The aim, according to UNESCO's definition of media and information literacy, is to allow individuals to become engaged citizens and responsible decision makers as well as to become skillful creators and producers of information and media messages in their own right. Thus, MIL supports our freedom of expression and our access to information. However, these rights must be exercised responsibly, especially today that there is a dramatic increase in access to information and communication online. We must become responsible digital citizens. In the next episode, we will discuss your responsibilities as users of media and information. Always remember, think wisely, create smartly, and share information responsibly. Until next time here on DepEd TV.